Yes, indeed. Welcome to Lockpicking Legend. Nice to see you. Can't see you. <laughs> nice to sense you. <laughs> That's a bit sensual. Um, what are we doing? <laughs> Not asking you isn't helping, is it? Right, today we're going to be looking at the binding pin principle. The amount of new lock pickers who say to me, what order do I pick the pins in? Blah, blah, blah. So we're going to look at the binding pin principle. I have got an ultra, super, splendid, magnifico, epic, close-up of a cutaway lock. I'll show you how to identify the binding pin. I'll show you how to pick the binding pin. And that will all be lovely. But before we get to that, we've got to talk about tolerances. Because of the tolerances. And now, this is probably a tolerance issue. Now we're going to be looking at the idea of tolerances. Security locks with good tolerances. Or an expensive lock that uh, is manufactured to tight tolerances. Bad tolerances. You're taking advantage of manufacturing tolerances. You can think of tolerances as the quality of machining. Ah, the tolerances are so poor. Look, a decrease of tolerances. Or what an engineer has called acceptable tolerances. Push, 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 push. Yeah. So you've probably heard, I mean, that little montage took me about two minutes to locate and put together. You've probably heard lock pickers talking about tolerances and thought, yeah, I don't know what that is. I'll just crack on without knowing. Now, tolerances is an engineering thing. It's, it's to do with manufacture. Now, you've probably seen uh, images like this, which is an exaggerated tolerance affair. And you've probably seen images like this, which is exaggerated tolerances in the holes in the core of a lock, but also the pins. Now, essentially, tolerances are the amount of bad manufacturing that, that you can expect in a given product. So the company that drills the holes in the core will say to the manufacturer, there's going to be maybe, oh, I don't know, what would it, I've, I've got to get, maybe something like 0 0.003 thousandths of an inch plus or minus each way. And then the man, the company making the pins are going to say the same thing. You know, these pins might have about 0 0.002 thousandths of an inch bigger or smaller each way. Yeah. And that's because that's because of that. That's because, and you've even got that with the plug in the housing. So there's all these the, the tolerances are the differences in size compared with what you ordered and what you actually got. Now the reason for that, as usual, is money and time, and time tends to come back to money because companies can actually produce things with zero tolerances. Well, next to, you know, it's, it's almost perfect. In fact, I've made a beautiful montage of some zero tolerance manufacture. Check it. I mean, look at this steel cube. Ominous or, oh my gosh, look, look, incredible. This is from an electrical discharge machine. And this can do zero tolerance machining, and I'll let them explain. We mostly use brass wire that's 10 thousandths of an inch thick. That's about three times the size of a human hair. For some projects, we use a wire that's four thousandths of an inch thick. The typical tolerance for a project like this is one tenth of a thousandth of an inch. We fill the tank with deionized water so the liquid has zero electrical current. The water is safe to touch, which is why we can put our camera lens underwater. After threading the wire, it creates an electrical arc that burns away any conductive material. The water flushes the material waste away and the water is recycled. Oh my gosh, one tenth of a thousandth of an inch. Now that's ridiculous, of course, and you're not gonna make locks like that. I mean, I would, wonder whether they'd work even. I've asked, I've asked many people, if you 
had a lock that was manufactured with zero tolerance machining, would it be impossible to open or would it be easy to open? I haven't got the head for understanding that. But what I have got the head for is putting together another lovely montage of some um, zero tolerance machining. Check them. I mean, look at it. Gorgeous one. Oh, didn't see his little brother there, did you? It's incredible. Another ominous cube, you say. And push. Come on, push. It's erotic. <laughs> I'm a man. I like metal. <laughs> Look at that, though. That, that's zero tolerance machining. Now, I doubt it is, but it, it looks bloody convincing. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe I should have done... Oh, oh, hang on. This is beautiful. I mean, look at the... Come on, stay on the centre of the screen, mate. Look how complex that is. And, and when he pushes it in, it just looks like a ball. Wow. Now, it actually gets more interesting. Um, oh, this is good. Look. Oh. <laughs> now, there's something I want you to watch here. When he takes it away so that... Look. That's because there's only a little bit of air. It's on an uneven surface, so the air's letting that go down. You understand? Because you can see it's an uneven surface. It looks like some kind of, I don't know, wood or whatever. But there's enough air to let that push the air out and become plush at the end there. Flush. See, look. But when you put it over the, over the edge of the table, but this is a better example of that. Look, so there's no air, can't get the air out. Look, that bounces. It spins, but move it over the edge, sinks. Another one like that, put it over that so there's no air can get out. Little bit of air compression, but move it over the edge, sinks. But now look, can lift the whole thing up. Absolutely remarkable. So... A, a little bit of a diversion there, but I hope now that you understand why we have binding pins. You know, in, a, in most locks, when you try and turn it with the wrong key or with a pick or whatever, it's usually only one tiny little pin that actually binds, that actually obstructs the core from turning in the housing. And when we pick locks, that's the pin we need to pick first. And we can identify it because we can go through all the pins. We can put a bit of tension. We can put our tension wrench in, turn the plug a little bit, turn the core a little bit, and then go through the pins. Which ones are just springy? Because if they're springy, if you can push it up, if you can push the key pin against the driver pin, and then the driver pin against the spring, that's not binding. The one that's providing resistance, why is it providing resistance? Because it's being clamped, but it's binding between the core and the housing. So that's the one you pick. You often have to let a tiny bit of tension off, because if it's binding too much, you're not going to be able to move it. And then when that one's set, and that's when you get that lovely big click. Doesn't sound like that. It's a click for sure. What happens? Well, the core turns a fraction of a millimetre. And another pin binds. And then you have to identify that one. So let's actually have a look at a lock. Let's have a look at some binding pins. Let's pick them. And let's wrap this show up. Okay, so here's a cutaway lock. What we've lost in definition, we've made up for in scale. So you'll be able to see all those pins. First thing, always do, just go through the lock, check all the pins and springs are working. A, a bodged spring or a dodgy pin will send you insane. Make sure it's all working first. I'll put my top of keyway tension tool in, a bit of clockwise turning pressure, and then I'm looking for resistance. One springy, two's... And maybe, but I'm not convinced. No, it's still springing. Move on to three. That's binding. 
Three is without a doubt binding, a little bit off the tension, that's set. Lovely. Move on to four, no, springy, five springy, six springy, go back, three still good, two is, one's binding, that's set now, lovely. Two, mm, three, I have to put, put it back in its place. Four, mm, five, and, uh, mm, yep, lovely. Now on to five, five set, six. Six is binding, because they all are. It's open, it's open. Wonderful. So you're, you're basically, I'll go through it again. You're looking for the, the pin that's, that's giving resistance. Why is it giving resistance? Because it's being clamped, because you're putting tension on the plug, it's being clamped between the housing and the core. So it, it doesn't want to move. That's what's locking the lock, essentially. That tiny little brass pin is what's securing your house and family. One pin. Find it, set it, pick it, open it, celebrate it. Five beers and a lady of easy leisure. Just going back through here now. And as you see, much the same principle. Oh, just lost a few there. That happens. You're going to lose some that you've previously set because sometimes if it's binding so tight, you've got too much tension on. When you release a bit of tension, you might lose some of the ones that have been set because the shear line, when you release tension, the shear line gets smaller. That little ledge decreases in width. So some of the set pins will come down but it's not a problem you know there's no rush <laughs> well you know we're not all making lock picking videos making us out to be master lock pickers where we can do each one in five seconds lock picking takes patience and we're just on that sixth one now five why is that not open six there you go bob is your uncle absolutely Wonderful. So there you have it, you absolute legends. I think I've made that clear. We delve deep, we've done a deep dive into tolerances and uh, zero tolerance machining. Um, yeah, wonderful. Um, I want to thank people who shared the video because I got a right bump in subscribers and more subscribers you're going to get more videos so if you could do us a small favour of giving us a like sharing it on your Facebook or your Twitter or your MySpace <laughs> that would be much appreciated hope you enjoyed this and we've got another cracker coming next week and I might even drop a couple of bonus videos during the week. Look after yourselves people, find those binders and set them. Ta-ta! And the sun goes down on Tokyo, Rodeo, Moloko, Rodeo. <laughs>